There are two things that work backwards in the Beyblade Burst universe as opposed to real life. That is awakening and resonance. One offers bladers a superior performance through extensive wear or damage to one's Beyblade, and the other proposes an ability to manifest a blader's will, performing specific attacks or maneuvers in battle by way of spiritual bond. I mean, did you ever wonder why bladers practice alone in the anime? I know they battle other bladers, but to train, a lot of them use only one Beyblade. When bladers have resonance with a Beyblade in the anime, it's because of the bond between blader and Beyblade have become so strong that it is in fact displayed through high amounts of intensity, power, and maneuverability in a Beyblade battle. Moreover, the strongest kind of bond in the anime is between a blader and a Beyblade's avatar, making the avatar the power source for the blader, not the Beyblade layer itself. Although some would argue that bladers are are the power source for the avatar. But whatever the case may be, the avatar itself is an anthropomorphic representation of the blader's spirit and bond with the avatar itself visualized. Now I bet you think you know how to Beyblade, but I know that you've never actually resonated with your Beyblade in this way. And there's good reason for that, that we'll get to in a moment. In this video, I will show you how to manifest your will on your Beyblade and potentially resonate with a Bey in real life. But I can already read the comments, so let's address some of them now. Will I see an avatar? No. Will I see my bay light on? No, not unless you have an electric driver. Will my hair light up? Oh god, no, come on, people. I can get an aura or a flare like Lane? No. Yes, actually, yes. According to many spiritual and religious beliefs, one's own energy or aura is an energy field, usually colored and emanating from a human body, animal, or object, which can and is always manifested, although only perceived by some. A blader's flare or resonance works in the same way as a visual representation of their energy level in various anime also sometimes referred to as chakra the first time i ever heard of chakra was when i saw naruto about five years ago and before that with dragon ball z and their reference to ki or chi level which is in essence the same thing most experts in the field agree that you have no control over how your aura manifests and it has nothing to do with your soul or spirit to strengthen one's aura is to strengthen one's mind such as we see with free de la hoya when he Meditate. What's that? A kind of training that can help you raise your concentration. If you recall, meditation was the first training that Free gave to Hikaru and Hiyuga to be able to resonate with their Beyblades in battle. It took them a lot of training to be able to do so, but in some cases like Iger, who was able to resonate with Achilles on the first episode, and of course Gwyn Reynolds, who immediately used superior flux. It seemed natural. This could be considered a flow state, a state of mind in which we are fully immersed in an activity, also known as being in the zone. Actions become effortless and fluid. Through meditation, you can enhance your mental focus, increasing your ability to reduce negative emotions and increase your self-awareness. In essence, that is the kind of mental framework of top-tier bladers who need to perform at their peak physical performance. And that's why still many bladers in the anime are doing strength cardio training along with meditation to develop into the legends they now are. We can see a supernatural connection between many professional athletes and their skills in the real world, who natural and learned skills cannot be duplicated by someone without years of proper training and focus. Getting us back to the main question and topic of the video, the reason why you can't resonate with your bay, and the reason why awakening a Beyblade doesn't make it stronger. The only true and tested way to have unimaginable blading abilities and gain what some would call no, that's not exactly what I'm promising you. What I'm promising is a better understanding of the Beyblade gameplay to have a more effective and consistent positive outcome in your battles. Just as we see in the anime, various characters, especially all the main characters in the Beyblade Burst series, can resonate with their Beyblades. This is a rare phenomenon and it tends to occur not only to kids, but adults too, because we know that Theodore Glass, otherwise known as Ashton, the leader of the Snake Pit in the Beyblade Burst Evolution series, was seeking to harness and control the power of the Beyblade avatar known as Spriggan on a quest that would seem ludicrous in our world, making a perfect Beyblade. But how does resonance work backwards in real life? Well, I don't think it's seeing a Beyblade avatar, nor is it seeing auras around bladers. Let me make that clear. Resonance with your Beyblade means mastering its skills over a specific amount of time, mainly in battle. What I mean by resonance being backwards in real life is that your bond isn't with the Beyblade avatar spirit itself, but with your own skills, abilities, and traits that you hone or develop over time. And in order to become one of those people that consistently win more than what is statistically plausible, the kind of good you get paid millions for at a given sport or activity has been documented and talked about 
in a book called Outliers, The Story of Success by Malcolm Gladwell. It is an awesome read and I'll leave the paid links for it down in the description below. The author breaks down how extremely wealthy businessmen, professional athletes, and famous musicians use a method called deliberate practice to amass nearly 10,000 hours. How much time? At least 10,000 hours of training before achieving what some would call a high level performer or athlete. And you can do this all on your own because this is the art of mastering a skill. And no, this is not a Skillshare plug. This is a Beyblade theory. This is where I like to think about how to do what we see in the anime, explained in real world terms, making it possible to further understand the Beyblade Burst world. You cannot rely on being naturally skilled. There are some who need no training to master a particular skill, but truth be told, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Which is exactly what happens to Dante and Iger after they haven't trained as much throughout the Bailey Burst surge season, which allowed for Shu Kurunai and Lane Valhalla to be able to climb to the top of the Beyblade hierarchy. What does 10,000 hours of blading really mean? Let's put it into context. Well, if you Beyblade for four hours a day, then would it actually take you 2,500 days or just under seven years to have exceptional skills in Beyblade. Moreover, deliberate practice and concentration on core concepts, prioritizing on your learning and concentrating only on essentials, you can be far superior to 99% of the general population in the same amount of time. I don't want you to get the wrong idea though. An amateur athlete could not get substantially better than a natural and trained athlete. In the 10,000 hours, it's just the beginning to being a master. If you want to become a master, you must devote this dedication for a lifetime. Because as we see in the anime, there's always someone who has been training harder, is stronger, or uses a better or upgraded system like we see with each new season in the show. And the thing is, that's likely how it is in real life too. One thing that I wonder is if Vault and all the other bladers will eventually become stronger as time passes by, ultimately never allowing any other characters to ever have a chance at being in the top 20, let alone the top three bladers in the world. I mean, do all the known characters have a limit on their resonance? Or can that power limit easily be broken as with Hikaru and Hyuga in Beyblade Burst Surge? Moving forward to Beyblade Burst Dynamite as well, did you ever wonder why Dynamite? It is my opinion that what the creators were going for was Dynamo. A Dynamo creates energy and the word Dynamo comes from the Greek Dynamis for power, which is befitting to the anime as Dynamite Bellfire is a powerful Beyblade. The one factor that makes it so strong is the ability to use specially designed parts to make it stronger. Beyblade is designed in a way that no one Beyblade can be considered perfect. And maybe that's the reason why we don't see the Snake Pit around anymore, along with Ashton, even Spriggan that's a dual spin Beyblade, or Imperial Dragon with an electric dash driver, and even Mucan Lock Beyblade layers. They can all be beaten. And just for fun, can you imagine you only practice for 10 minutes a day to reach 10,000 hours, it would take you nearly 274 years to potentially become a master at any given skill. But launching two Beyblades at once won't give you twice the practice or training. It would only be for fun. If you launch more than one Beyblade into the stadium, that may be doing more harm than good for your training. As by using only one Beyblade instead of two, when you train, you gain a better understanding of the Beyblade's patterns without compromising the Beyblade's conditions. Granted that bumps and scrapes can still happen from interactions between the stadiums. A Beyblade training regimen should include physical endurance and mental fortitude training, not just mindless repetition. To strengthen instead of enlarging or increasing your aura, concentrate of improving it. The way to do that is to become a better person. Your aura is a reflection of your inner strengths and passions. And remember that the 10,000 hour rule is not really about quantity. It's about the quality of training and how you apply it in your daily life. You can spend four hours a day to build your skills or build a meticulous plan that includes a combination of short, sharp, and focused sessions that only last about 30 minutes a day. But remember to have fun because real learning doesn't happen just through organized training. Most of it happens when you're fooling around, inventing games, competing, experimenting, mimicking, and tackling problems by inventing solutions. When you're wholly engaged in the art of simple, intense play. In the end though, I think that bladers in the anime Beyblade alone because, well, why not? If there's no one else to battle with, it's still fun. And for athletes like them, it's necessary to train and gain more mental focus and bond with their Beyblade to become stronger. 
Although that's not to say that blading alone is better than blading with others. It is to say that having the motivation to do it alone can define you as a person. And of course, this method can be applied to other skill sets and you can become a master with hard work. And it really doesn't depend on the size of the Beyblade collection that you have. In one of my previous theories, I ponder whether or not bladers collect Beyblades and theorize how big their collections are. But maybe the more important question is, how much is a Beyblade collection worth? Subscribe and you might find out next time with this Beyblade Dad.